The Lord is risen. He is risen and I say it again, the Lord is risen. He is risen <clears throat> Alleluia. Rise and share the peace of the Lord with each other. Hallelujah, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, then we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness.
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you at the whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all of your sins. As a called, ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sin. I do so in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father, to your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from death of sin by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Testament reading for this Easter Sunday comes to us from the 25th chapter of Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well-refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading comes to us from the the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were there saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone? for us from the entrance of the tomb. And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back, and it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in white robe. And they were alarmed, and he said to them, Do not be alarmed. 
You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go now and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seen them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. A question right off the get-go. Would you say that that song that was just sung by everybody here, was that a sad song or was that a glad song? Glad song, absolutely. And by the way, to all those who are playing up there, that is going to be my funeral song uh, for the sermon. And maybe you'll just be around to come and play that whenever that takes place in the future. That was wonderful. Thank you very much. So on Good Friday, did we sing glad songs or did we sing sad songs? Sad songs. In fact, here are just a couple of them that we sang, maybe not here, but elsewhere. Oh, sacred head now wounded, with grief and shame weighed down. Now scornfully surrounded with thorns, thy only crown. There's lots of other sad words, if you will. But those sad words on Good Friday ultimately were really glad words. You know what? Jesus on that cross died to pay for all of our sins. And then through faith in Jesus and who he is and what he's done, through faith in him crucified, but then also resurrected, we have salvation through faith in Jesus. And that is why we sing this morning, Jesus Christ, let's just repeat after me. Jesus Christ is risen today. Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Which means praise the Lord. Our triumphant holy day. 
our triumphant holy day, Alleluia. Who did once upon the cross? Alleluia. Suffer to redeem our loss. So, sad songs on Good Friday, and now glad songs where we sing Alleluia, praise the Lord on Easter morning. And by the way, you can sing that all through the coming year, through the rest of the year. Let's do that. Alleluia. Praise the Lord. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. You may take your seats. <clears throat> crucified and resurrected Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And you may be seated. I don't know that we could ever say it enough. Hallelujah. Jesus has risen. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. And Easter really means for all of us the dawn of new days. Indeed, the dawn of a new day each and every day. The next day in our life is a brand new day, and the first day in the rest of our life. And so understanding who we are in Christ is very important for each and every day. And today is all about newness of life in a number of different ways. Most of us love and know the promise of John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever trusts and believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so we say, with John 3.16 in the Rex of Scripture, Alleluia, Christ is risen, He is risen indeed, and let us rejoice this morning in the newness of life. Romans 6, 4-5 says, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of God the Father, we too may live a new life. 
For if you and I have been united with Jesus in a death like his, we have also been united with him in a resurrection like his. That's good news, brothers and sisters in Christ. Hallelujah. We are united with him in a resurrection like his in days to come. And knowing this resurrection is our future, actually, with faith in him, takes the power out of the sting of death. We all face death, but knowing we're on our way to heaven through faith in Jesus Christ takes the sting out of that which will take place for all of us. Future newness, future life, future resurrection. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. But we should not lose track of the fact that we also have new life right now. New life right now as we trust and believe in Jesus on our way to heaven. 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us that if anyone is in Christ, it's all of you, then you are a new creation. The old has gone, and the new is here. Ephesians 2, 2 to 5, shares with all of us that we were dead in our transgressions, in our sins, which we used to live, but because of His great love for us, because of His great mercy for us, because of His great grace for us, we are now alive right now alive spiritually through faith in Jesus Christ. And that's, by the way, present tense. We are alive right now. And the truth of the matter is, till the day we go on to be with God in the glories of heaven, we are resurrection people. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And because he has done those things for us, we have new access to God. Or might I say renewed access to God. At the moment of Jesus' death, the veil or the curtain in the temple was torn asunder from top to bottom. God did that. Have you ever connected to the significance of that veil being torn from top to bottom? Well, what it means is that you and I now have renewed access, access to God any time we want to come into His presence. If we go back to the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve had access, but then their willful disobedience turn that all around. But you and I now, through faith in Jesus, we do have access to our Heavenly Father. Used to, in the old days, there was a high priest that could only go into the temple, and he would go into the temple one day during the year, the Day of Atonement. He would go in, he would make sacrifice for the sins of the people, sacrifice for his sins as well. This is one guy. He had to go in there one time in one year, sacrificing animal sacrifices for our sins. When Jesus died on the cross, that veil was torn asunder from top to bottom. And now you and I, we have renewed access to our Heavenly Father anytime we want it. Anytime we want to go to our Heavenly Father, He is there for us, and we can go to Him through the High Priest, Jesus Christ. We also have renewed relationship with God. Have you ever wondered what it was like kind of when Adam and Eve, before they fell into sin, walking around in the Garden of Eden, talking to God, having that kind of conversation, that kind of intimacy, that kind of connection? Well, because of Jesus, you and I 
now have that renewed opportunity to be that close to our Heavenly Father and walk with Him in peace. Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, since we have been justified through our faith in Jesus, we have peace with God. And we can, in fact, come into His presence anytime we want to. That's not a peace and quiet, calm and serene place like in a hammock beside a lake. Now, that's a peace between our Heavenly Father and us. We were once at war with each other, and now we have peace with Him. And that gives us a new standing before God. Because of sin, you and I stood condemned before God, guilty and destined to face the penalty for our transgressions. Think standing in a court, and by the way, one time I stood in a court in front of a judge that was a member of my congregation. I had a speeding ticket, and I did not want to stand even in front of that judge who I knew very well. But think of standing in front of a judge, and you're about ready to receive a guilty verdict. And you know that to be true. And by the way, it's not pay a fine. It's a death sentence. Standing before God Almighty Himself. The Colossians says, 2, 13, 14, God forgave us all of our sins. God canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness to Him, which stood against us and condemned us, and he took all of that away by nailing his son, Jesus Christ, to the cross. Through faith in Jesus on the cross, God declares you and I to be not guilty of our sins, even though we are. And one last freedom. We actually have new freedom in Christ, Before Easter, that very first Easter, you and I were slave to sin, changed, bound, shackled, but Easter changed that when Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus broke sin's rule over us. He broke the chains, busted the shackles, and set you and I free. Romans 6, 6 6-7 says, for we know that our old self was crucified with Jesus so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves to sin doesn't mean we'll never sin again, but we shall no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died in Christ has been set free in Christ. Though we still struggle with sin, we are no longer enslaved to it. As Christ works in us to sanctify and perfect us, we are free not to sin, free in Christ to be more pure and more holy. And that doesn't mean, once again, that all is settled, all is done. I had a mentor in days gone by who taught me uh, a little bit of a lesson about guerrilla warfare. You know, you and I are new creatures in Christ. Remember that. You and I are new creations in Christ. But that does not mean we still don't have to put up with the old us. The old us is still around to hound us, if you will. And as in guerrilla warfare, could come along and trip us up every once in a while, but the truth of the matter is that you and I have the victory over sin, Satan, death, hell, through our faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord. Do not, please do not, on this Easter morning forever, forget you already have won the victory through your faith in Jesus Christ. You are, in fact, a new creation. And just to repeat very quickly what I've already said, you have new life 
in Christ. You have new access to God. You have a renewed relationship with your holy heavenly Father. You have a new standing before God, not guilty of your sins. And we have new freedom in Christ to live our life in and through and for him. Let's celebrate what we have new this morning in these various ways. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Now be the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding. Keep your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We confess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before words, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was made man, was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven, hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you kept your promise and delivered up your Son to be our Savior. By his sacrificial death, our sins have been forgiven, and by his rising again, we have the hope of everlasting life. Keep us in this holy joy throughout the Easter season, indeed, in all of our daily lives, that we may not fear our enemies nor give in to temptation of despair in days of trouble. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Have mercy on the sick and those who have need, gracious Heavenly Father. We especially think of those who continue to struggle with all kinds of health difficulties and recuperation. Mark Bowman, Isaiah Derrick, Roy Ruhlman, Kathy Strakis, Brenda Kinslow, Thomas and Vivian Neller, Charles Merkel, Rhoda Needham, Jennifer Overly, Greg Pring, Gretchen Welk, and Larry Faust. Let the dawning of light of new creation in Christ sustain them in their faith, and in accord with your will, grant them renewed health and well-being, a foretaste of their eternal healing in the glories of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. We join today in singing eternal hallelujahs with innumerable angels in festal gathering, with the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven, and with the spirits of the righteous made perfect. And we bring these petitions before you, dear Father, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death. By his rising again, he has restored us to everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those to whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship. With the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave to me, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for your sin. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take, drink, all of you. This cup is the New Testament, my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now, Master, the body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and preserve you, keep you steadfast in your faith unto life everlasting. Depart in his peace. give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this solitary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give to you his peace. Amen.